If you can throw a punch, you can compress a golf ball. I've worked with players on this over and over again. If we want to get that forward shaft lean, get those hands leaned out in front, just like you see every single touring pro do, release it out in front. So many things happen. We get better energy into the ball. We get better accuracy, everything across the board. I've worked with players on this in terms of getting compression all by getting something that resonates in their mind. A punch is something very simple. We all know how to just throw a simple punch. If we can do that, we can get a sensation that allows us to start learning how to compress the ball with forward shaft lean. So what we can do is we can use this sensation as a drill and also as a swing course thought on the course. So if we have a nice simple thought on the course, playing becomes so much easier. Also, if it makes sense mechanically and we understand it, it's like the best of both worlds. So let's go ahead and dive into this. If we can throw a punch, we can compress a ball. So what we're going to do is do this very simple visualization. I want you to start off without a club and we're gonna get into our golf stance like we're gonna hit a ball. And what I want you to do is I want you to imagine a wall about six inches outside of your lead leg. So this would be on the target side. Very, very simple. We are going to, first and foremost, just think about punching the lead wall with our lead hand. If I was gonna punch that lead wall, it'd be very simple. I'd just take my arm and I would punch it. It's a little bit awkward because obviously I would wanna more punch it this way, but we need to focus more on the lead hand because this is what's going to help us understand how to compress the ball. A lot of touring pros have the same exact feel. So what we're going to do, once we have this very simple motion, okay, I can punch that lead wall. Now we are going to be more specific. We are going to use a physical piece or little or specific piece of our body in order to do this. We want to punch the ball with the bow of the lead wrist. We are going to bow our lead wrist and we are going to punch the wall with our lead wrist. So here's my wall. I'm going to take my lead wrist and I'm going to punch it. Now there's going to be, uh, that's going to be the, the next step. The, the, we're just making sure we're just hitting it with our lead wrist. From there, we are going to start loading up the hand to punch it. So I know, hey, here's my lead wrist. Let me just punch the wall with my lead wrist. Very, very simple motion. And again, because we're punching it with something, like if I was to tell you to punch it with your elbow, you would just elbow it. We're just going to elbow it with our wrist. That's essentially that same motion. Now we're going to load that wrist into this motion. This is the key here of what, where I'm sure you've seen keep the lead wrist bowed, those kind of things. If we don't load this where we get, we talk about this in the top, uh, the top speed system where we want to build lag in the downswing, this is what we're going to be doing, but we're going to be learning it in a little bit smaller step right here. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with a neutral wrist. We're going to come back from here. We're going to load that wrist. So we're actually going to get the bow in transition and punch the wall. So this is very intuitive to a lot of players because you're saying, okay, let me take this back. Now let me punch the, the, the wall with my lead wrist. If I take this back and I don't bow my wrist in transition, then I'm just gonna smack the wall with my fingers or my knuckles. I wanna hit that wall first with my lead wrist. So we're gonna go back and then in transition, we're going to punch the wall. So now we get this very simple motion. Hey, let me punch that wall with my lead wrist. Now, once we have this motion, we can start introducing the club. So I don't want you to hit a ball just yet. I want you to get a, a very, very easy brushing the turf. We definitely don't want to dig the club into the ground in order to do so. We're not worried about anything but taking the, the hand back just like we did and punching the wall with the lead wrist. And as you can see, this is going to give me a ton of forward shaft lean. It's going to de-lock the club a lot, especially when I'm just doing this with one hand. So now I've got this feel where I'm taking it back neutral and I'm loading the shaft I'm loading the wrist and hitting that lead wall, which does load the shaft. So once we have a good feel for that, we're gonna do two hands. Very, very simple, we're just working up the process. So what I want you to do when you're working through each one of these steps is make sure that you're executing the checkpoint. If punching the wall with your lead wrist is very easy, go ahead and grab the club and go to the next thing. If it's not, make sure you get this before moving to the next piece. Now we're just gonna add two hands and we are going to punch the wall with the lead wrist. Okay, we're not hitting the ball just yet. Once we have feel pretty comfortable with that, now we have to pay really close attention when we introduce the ball. When this ball is here, everything, this has been referred to a lot of different things um, over my career. Um, the one that's most recent, they call it the white devil because when you got the perfect motion, you got the perfect uh, practice swing, but then you put the ball there and everything tends to fall apart. So very easy swing starting off 100% focus on punching that lead wall, the wall in front of your lead leg with that wrist. So very, very easy swings here, nice easy motion, punching that wall with the lead wrist. So my sensation there was I imagined a wall, I took it back, 
and I loaded my wrist into the wall just like I was if I was punching a punching bag with just my lead wrist. So this is going to change your bottom point, especially since you're used to early releasing the club, throwing the club head at the ball. Usually the club head is getting to that wall first. We are completely changing this. So what I want you to do is I want you to make sure you can hit at least three, four, five in a row solidly with punching that lead wall before you start increasing any speed or swing length. So just very nice, easy swing starting out. So once you feel like you've got that solid hit on that easy pace, I want you to start building just a little bit bigger swings. Give yourself some markers. Say, hey, I'm gonna take my hands to about belt high, to about chest high, and then all the way to a full swing. So now that I've got a pretty good feel for this, I'm gonna take my hands to about belt high, and I'm going to load my wrist into that wall and punch the wall. That's gonna be my sensation. So there we go. I had that same feel. And again, I, I know I'm holding onto the club a little bit, but remember this is a drill to really, really feel the exaggeration of forward shaft lean. And trust me, once you get to more speed, you're not gonna be able to hold this. This is gonna turn into more of a feel than something we're actually gonna be able to do. If you do actually start doing it, that's a good news because you can start um, under, or uh, you, you've over exaggerated, now you can work backwards, which is the fastest way to do it. So now I'm gonna take a little bit bigger swing, about a three quarter swing with that same sensation. Okay, I actually thinned that one a little bit, but my wrist did get there, but you're gonna see, we're gonna get really, really low trajectory. Let me try that out one more time. Since I didn't hit it solidly, I need to make sure that in a three quarter swing, I can execute this loading of the wrist into that wall. There we go, that was a little bit more solid, and as you can see, because I had some more speed, that club is starting to release on me, even without me feeling it doing it. So, now that I've got a feel for the half swings, and we can see how much energy is being put in these balls. This is a six iron. That total distance was 184, and I literally barely felt like I put much into it, but I put a lot of energy into the ball because we had that forward shaft lean. So let's go ahead and give one a ride from the full swing. Again, my sensation here, my thought, is I have that wall here. I'm going to go up to the top of my swing, and I'm going to do whatever my body kind of reacts to do naturally to punch that wall in front of me. Now there we go, so nice easy feeling swing from the top just like the rest of the swings. Got 215 total distance with a six iron. I'm gonna be very happy with that, especially with how easy that I felt that I swung with that. Now remember, the sensation is going to be we're punching the wall, but in actuality, when we get a good feel for this, that club's gonna release out perfectly and we're gonna be in a nice forward shaft lean position if we execute and we allow ourselves to train this sensation. Now it's very important to understand if we don't shallow this club out properly from the top, it's gonna to make this very difficult, if not too impossible, to make sure that we're entering into that wall properly with the lead wrist and we're actually punching that wall. So we're gonna go over something called the anti-roll method that's gonna go over those two moves and show you how to do those from the top of the swing perfectly. Head instructor and owner Clay Ballard has a great lesson called the anti-roll method that I'm gonna play a preview of at the end of this lesson that you can see that whole lesson by clicking on the i-card that pops up on the screen or if you don't see that i-card that's fine you can click on the link in the description below and when you pair up getting that club shallowed out and square with punching the wall you have all the pieces you need to get a powerful effortless golf swing and put all the energy you need to so we'll see you here in the anti-roll method here's the bottom line if you've been taught to roll the club in the early downswing, that causes the shaft to get steep. And that steep club causes all your problems. It causes you to hit it way behind the big hitters and way inconsistent with your quality of strikes. So you're in the tall grass and the trees and the hazards all day long. Now the great news is this. There's really only two pieces that you need to know to fix all these problems. The first one is we need to learn the proper way to square up the club face. Instead of rolling the forearms and getting steep, there's another way that the pros do this. Once you learn this right way to square up the club face, then you can shallow out from the inside and everything starts to fit together. Now I'm gonna teach you this right now in what I call the anti-roll method. You may also hear this called the motorcycle move or the tour twist, but let's walk through exactly how to do that. Now what I want you to do is go ahead and go kind of in the last parallel in the downswing. So here, I want my hips to go ahead and be opening up. I want my club to be parallel with the ground and I want my hands to be in front of my right thigh. Now, when I take my grip, you're gonna notice that when I do this, the club face is basically straight up and down. So if I'm looking at it from this angle, you'll see the face is straight up and down, and my logo of my glove is pointed out in front of me. Now from there,